There are two videos, so I just want to open them and uh, I need to this. Okay. So, um, so if you hear me well. Um, so I'm go I'm Crystal Geber, and I work on this project with my colleague uh, Samuel. Uh, on my side, I am more uh, I am a researcher, and I work more on the vision. And so Samuel is the lead developer on this uh, topic. So. I will ask him to come for the technical questions <laughs> part uh, later on. So I'm going to present Tiny Container. And Tiny Container, it is an abstraction and resource management layer that we created uh, for containers on, uh, on Riot. Um, the results that are presented here uh, are partially uh, available. It is a work in progress. And we put it in open source, and the link is just uh, it's just here. Um, so if I give my vision of what is containerization, uh, containerization it's like um, some islands that are part of an archipelago, and you can think that the archipelago extends from the cloud up until IoT devices, and what we want to do with uh, tiny containers is that these islands are actually fortified and self-contained, but we want to build bridges in order to connect them, but in a controlled way and without breaking uh, this uh, isolation. Um, so this results from a work, it's a collaborative project that is called the Tiny Part. It is a project funded by France and Germany in which we collaborate with uh, five partners. Uh, so you saw earlier uh, one of the enablers of the project that is PPMPU, and we work with Emmanuel and uh, and Kuhn in this uh, project. And here, Tiny Container is um, a joint work on this. Um, where does the project Tiny Part comes from? Is that we see that uh, there is a tendency, marketing tendency, that we want to blend uh, user experience with digital world. We want to enhance personalization of, uh, of uh, services, of user experiment, uh, experience. Sorry, but in the same time, we see that the regulation, uh, European regulation is becoming more and more strict in terms of security. It requires more and more effort to fo follow these uh, uh, regulatory requirements and also well privacy in general is a selling a hard selling point and it's interesting for users they want better experiences but they also want uh, privacy and so uh, in the tiny part what we want is to investigate uh, continuization how can we adapt some IoT logic to context but also how do we uh, isolate these uh, these mechanisms? And what we want to do is bring actually some open source and modular bricks for some uh, safety uh, or secure private by design architectures. The context in which we place ourselves, where well, we imagine some IoT devices on which there are containers, uh, and uh, that can be pushed by a remote server. And this remote server can also collect some data. And we are interested in looking at isolation, but in a multi-party environment. And so when I say that, what are the multi-party? Well, we can we define a certain number of roles that can intervene uh, around these type of IoT devices. 
Um, so this is an extreme situation where we see uh, there, there are all the roles and we could say that one uh, actor holds every role, but in everyday life, we see those roles, but they are then blended. Uh, some actors hold multiple roles. So for example, if I look home automation, uh, usually there is an end user who is also the device owner. And on the other hand, you may have a company that is uh, providing the device that is providing a, ser um, uh, a service on it and maintains it and also have a platform that is going to control and uh, manage the, the device. Um, and so in our um, project, we're reasoning like the worst case, if we have multiple actors uh, and each one of them plays a specific role. We target low power IoT, well, basically it's the same kind of uh, targets uh, of Riot. Um, and so Tiny Container is a, 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 a module of a layer. It exposes an API that can be used by an application. And this application typically makes the link with the remote server. Uh, and here I put the, well, the API that are exposed to this application. Uh, there are several features of Tiny Container. The first of one, which uh, is uh, well, life cycle management of the containers. We also provide some runtime abstraction. So in Orange, we primarily really work with uh, Wasm and Wasm micro runtime. But previously, we were working with uh, JavaScript, and Kuhn recently added support for, for RBPF. Uh, Tiny Container also provides uh, management to resources, uh, access management to resources, sorry. And finally, we have some support to allow the execution of multiple container in parallel. So a few words about how can we use a Tiny Container and how it really works. So Tiny Container, we define a state machine for these uh, containers. So first of all, there is a step to provision containers on uh, IoT devices. Then you see here some steps uh, during the phase where the containers are running and then when, well, when they are stopped. And so in the running phase, you can see that there is this on loop. This mechanism, it really resembles uh, Arduino uh, on loop mechanism where we suppose that the container will have some function and it will be consecutively uh, um, executed. And uh, we can also pause this execution if there is a Cisco. So for example, we want to read on, a, on an endpoint. Well, it's in pause while uh, waiting for a for return. Um, so how do we create a container? Well, first we suppose that it's provisioned and then uh, the module uh, called service will create a thread and inside this thread will create a container agent. And then this one, it will uh, load and start uh, a container. Um, well, then during the container lifecycle, there are some functions that the container agent can use in order to pass the containers from one state to another. And we have a mechanism called the heartbeat. So basically, this is the container agent which hands over the execution at some point to, to the service. Um, and we do this because we wanted to have uh, so have the possibility to execute uh, multiple containers simultaneously. And it allows us to not be in a preemptive mode, uh, which is the model of uh, alpha yet. And then uh, when we, ex we allow to expose uh, resources to container and uh, we, um, we consider uh, different types of resources. They are other local, so typically some syscalls, but also we consider endpoints that can be some functions from other containers located in the same IoT devices, but also remote uh, that could be a function from a server or something from another container or on another uh, device. And so it is the job of the service uh, component to manage endpoints and to manage the connection to these endpoints. And we have the firewall, with, which is here to actually authorize the calls to these endpoints. 
So now if I go a little bit more in detail about these aspects, uh, usually we think about container, we, there are code and data, and we add on top of this, uh, of this some uh, metadata. And metadata, in our case, there are several parts. The first one is to identify the container. And we put here a token uh, with the syscall mask. So basically, this is a, um, a, a mask which contains the rights to call uh, the syscalls that are exposed to the, the container. The endpoints, so here we have a list of, uh, of endpoints and you see that there are different types with an authorization code, which is a token that can be provided. Typically, it will be used for remote use cases. So if you want to access uh, a resource on a remote uh, a server, maybe you need to present a token. And finally, there is a security part with like checksums and, uh, and things to control the, the metadata. Um, how do we use it? So at provisioning of the container, the service will hand over this uh, metadata to the firewall. And the firewall, first of all, will check uh, the checksums and the tokens. And if everything is, is OK, it will assign an ID to the container. And it will fill in what we call a container table, which contains the Cisco mask and the endpoints. And it will use it afterwards to, to authorize uh, the calls. Um, so, and that's where we are now. So the next step for us is uh, well, to benchmark uh, our system to, to evaluate the performance and the mem memory usage. Also, we want to work on the root of trust to, to uh, set up a tiny container and uh, provision the containers on IoT devices. And finally, we're in the same project as BPMPU, so we want to look into uh, integrating this system with uh, with our colleagues. Um, we would like to have uh, some uh, some discussions. So, for, first of all, some feedbacks, and also, uh, what do you think? Uh, do you have some ideas of use cases and things like that? There is also a discussion. To which, to which we are linked in the, in the Riot Forum. It was posted by Kun, uh, related to uh, the interface, uh, Cisco interface for bindings. And finally, well, <laughs> while we were preparing this presentation, we were also wondering what could we have done differently. And one of the things we thought of that here, it's a module of Riot, it's on top of Riot. Maybe it could have been uh, an application firewall, but inside Riot. So, uh, yeah, that's maybe it's an interesting topic to to discuss. And so now we had several demos. So we have some um, um, connection issues. So the live demo actually we can do it, but on the room upstairs because <laughs> we don't have a connection issue there. So maybe during the break you can see my colleague uh, Samuel. But I have a, a recording, and it shows actually we implemented our own uh, idea of a use case for this, and that's what I'm going to show. So just before I give you a little bit of context, so we imagine in this user story that there is a device owner, it is the town hall, and they put in place in a public space some connected sports machine. Uh, and there is a... a a cloud operator, for example, cloud container management provider will allow a third provider, which is uh, my coach. Uh, and my coach prov proposes to create some personalized um, uh, coaching uh, session for their end users. Uh, what you will see, uh, first of all, there is a mobile application that allows the user to select the, the sports machine and also to configure his work session. And at some point, it's going to uh, create um, the, a container and uh, send it to, uh, to the device. And here, it's actually target. This is what the instructions uh, to the user. Here, the machine is a, a button presser. Uh, and then the result is whether the user or the person uh, press the button at the right time or not. Um, so the demo is in two parts. First of all, I need to 
Um, there is uh, the provisioning part. It's yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> Uh, I know if you can get rid of this. <laughs> don't don't ask questions you don't want to be asked. <laughs> First, uh, uh, this is on the mobile phone. So he was setting up the session and now it's sending to the devices. Um, and then I need to move to the second video, <laughs> which is, shows what is happening on, uh, on the IoT device. Uh, so here is the terminal and here is the device. And you see that Oh, he's doing his uh, sports session. Uh, that's uh, that <laughs> so. That's uh, that's uh, the the demo. <laughs> That's very decent. Um, what I'm curious about with the mention that you could um collaborate with different legislatures, would that be an extra layer or would that allow you to get rid of the of the virtual machine and just this machine no less that executed in the next environment? What is the most sort of the additional uh, layers? So we need to get rid of the today this is working on our uh, layouts. We need to to see whether our code is, if we try to run it on the Ryan ported over PIP already, uh, we will see if we get any huge errors and uh, <laughs> but we didn't try this step yet. Um, I don't know if Samuel has uh, some. Oh. 
Yes. Um, it's no more than later, but the we we don't have uh, we have some some ideas, but uh, we want to push. Uh, as I said, we want to benchmark a bit to see also the limits uh, of it. Um, but yeah, uh, of course, it's slower than native uh, execution. The WebAssembly runtime is your implementation, or like is it a very known implementation? We use the implementation from the bytecode aliens. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, people that want to push this. Um, Web assembly into other uh, in, into other things than just the browser, and they um, build the bytecode clients, and uh, their embedded uh, runtime is more or less bummer. Uh, the Web the, the assembly micro runtime. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so with bytecode clients, they created the uh, free. We will run time, the one of them is the micro run time that can run on the embedded devices, and that's the one. They are also the people that uh, get rid of the uh, body, it's uh, the, the, the C for body, yeah. uh, which is not in type the C that we use later, but um, especially we use a graph that uh, fit the components of the body of such. Yes, that are not the run for the next one. Uh, and maybe so to respond about the performance already, what you have seen, it's running on the same device as uh, Lin is using. So this is 64 kilobyte uh, uh, from the 256 one. So already it's working on a small, uh, small device. I think now we mostly tested uh, one. Uh, we, we haven't really tested uh, having multiple containers and seeing up to how many containers we can run parallel. So uh, on this small device, we already see that like the Bluetooth stuff that we're using for communication is taking like half the space, uh, available space. So uh, <laughs> there is not much place left already to, to play with one, two containers. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we want, we're going to move on a little bit um, more spacious uh, board because well, we want to see, uh, we would like to be not constrained that much by, uh, by uh, the place that we take with us. <laughs> uh, you have to find the binary of these larger than native or like how does the co size compare? So I'm sorry, I don't they know are, if you have some uh, ideas. This I think it is a flexible flexible with the when you run the yeah. 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 What function and what part of the functionality you uh, are uh, putting in the container? If you are uh, providing the, the driver for for your external hardware, of course, it's, uh, it will be at, at least as big, of course, it's uh, maybe not as efficiently encoded. Um, but um, if you are uh, just calling functions, which you are probably doing since you want to extract from the hardware, uh, and do you really have access to the hardware? Uh, this depends on the, on, the, depends on the on the on the system call API that you're using. Um, the button the button VM yeah. that uh, is an isolation layer which it provides its its own memory space yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, it's, uh, provide uh, 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 a, a huge differentiation between the. Uh, the memory plate is not as um as as, as small as the debug RBPF. Uh, they basically are in the same memory space. And uh and so 
if you provide some means of, uh, of access through the uh, system calls to the hardware, like write to memory and uh, then there is a, a, in this uh, CVT token or in the uh, system call mask there is uh, allowed in MMOE region uh, in, in GPI01, then you can do the GPI01 uh, ending by this uh, buzzing interface. But you always have to provide a system ports that let you access this. Today, uh, on the So there is no yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So more power, more you guys, you had an article on pencil containers and you benchmarked like a JavaScript uh, a web container, RBPF container. And in this article, you have like a, a comparison between some C code and yeah. when it's uh, in a web container, one container, it takes that much place, RBPF container. Yeah. that much place on our side we didn't really do this uh this work because we wanted everything to, to run but uh but this comparison is uh is made and it's uh not to clarify from the yeah. okay so um yeah so